Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Trigonometric Functions of Any Angle. This is part one. We have several parts here because it's one of the most important lessons we can learn that we are going to learn in this sequence. So in the past, we have learned about quadrant one almost exclusively. We've talked about the other quadrants a little bit, but mostly focused on quadrant one because everything is positive in quadrant one. If you think about it, uh, if you think about it, the uh, y-axis is positive in quadrant one, and the x-axis is also positive in quadrant one. So because of that, everything is positive in quadrant one. It makes it very simple. But when we start talking about different parts of the unit circle outside of quadrant one, we have other signs that pop pop up, right? So originally, when we defined sine and cosine, we drew triangles, right, which were positive numbers pretty much in quadrant one. You can think of this triangle here as being, here's the hypotenuse, here we go down, here's one leg of the triangle, and then the other leg of the triangle would be over here. So this forms like the triangle, the main triangle that we were drawing, opposite over adjacent uh, would be the sine, adjacent, I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse would be the sine, adjacent over hypotenuse is the cosine, tangent is opposite over adjacent. We drew it in terms of a triangle. That triangle was kind of a first quadrant triangle, so everything was positive. But now we're taking the training wheels off, and we're going all the way around, and so sometimes the sine and the cosine are not positive anymore. The tangent, the cotangent, the secant, sometimes they're not positive. Sometimes they even have crazier values than that. We're going to get into that kind of thing as we move along. So this one's the smallest angle, this one's a little bit bigger, and this is the largest angle of all that I've drawn. But in every possible angle around the unit circle, you can pick some point P, which I've drawn, some point P, right? P has some X and Y coordinates. How do you read the X, Y coordinates? Well, you go down to read the X coordinate and you go over to, the, to read the Y coordinate. You go up for the X coordinate, over for the Y coordinate, up for the X coordinate, over for the Y coordinate. This is not too hard, right? It's just you're reading the X, Y coordinates of point B, P in all the cases. But notice that the coordinates of X and Y can be positive or negative, right? Because depending on where the point P is, X can be, in this case, X is negative. In this case, X here is negative. But over here, X is positive. Over here, Y is positive. But over here, Y is negative. And over here, Y is positive again. So X and Y can be positive or negative, and that is going to be the fundamental reason why the sine and the cosine can be negative and positive. It's because the X components of wherever your angle is, of what any point on that, on that line that forms the angle, can be positive or negative. And it, it, that's why it's the projection on X and Y. It's all tying into what we talked about just a second ago. So going back down memory lane, we defined the cosine, I'm sorry, the sine of some angle. Remember in quadrant, you know, one with a triangle, right? We, I, I want to draw it because I don't want to clutter up what I have, but we had a triangle and we had an angle and we had opposite, adjacent, and we had the hypotenuse, right? We said that the sine of an angle is the opposite of the hypotenuse. And we called that opposite side Y, right? We call that opposite side Y. So we called it Y, which was the Y, uh, the vertical side of the triangle over the hypotenuse, which we called R. The definition of sine that we learned a long time ago for a triangle, it's the same definition here, right? Um, because I could draw a triangle. I, in fact, maybe I should. Let me just draw a little triangle here. If I draw a triangle, say this is uh, this guy, this is the opposite side we call Y, this is the adjacent side we call X, this is the hypotenuse we call R. This point at the tip of that triangle is P, X, Y. Because the X coordinate, that is the X coordinate of P, and the Y coordinate uh, is the Y coordinate of P as well. Remember, the, the origin goes down here, right? This triangle is just sitting on top of an xy plane. So x units over is the x coordinate of p, and y units up is the y coordinate of p. But x and y are always positive in the original days when we were just talking about you know, really basic angles, acute angles, right? Now we're opening up the angle so it's bigger than an acute angle. It's way over here. But the definition of the sine is exactly the same. It's in terms of a triangle, we called it opposite over hypotenuse, which we called y over r. Here, it's exactly the same definition. The y value divided by r. That is the definition of the sine, right? So if that's the definition of the sine, what is the definition of cosine? Cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side in the triangle was the x. So x over r is what we called it. The definition here doesn't change. It's still x over r. So then what would the tangent be? Now I'm going to tell you a secret. The tangent is going to be defined as y over x. Now you may say, hey, I don't remember you saying that. Well, think about it. We said tangent of the angle was opposite over adjacent. 
opposite over adjacent. So we're gonna call it y over x. Now we've done sine, cosine, tangent. What comes next? We learned about the cotangent of theta. Now the cotangent of theta is one over the tangent of theta, right? And so when you do one over y over x, one over y over x and flip it and multiply, it ends up becoming x over y. Now in addition to the cotangent, we have the secant and we have the, uh, let me see if I leave enough space here. Yeah, we'll do it down here, the cosecant. Now I told you to write it in this order, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. So then we can draw our little rainbow. This goes with this, the cosine goes with this, and then the sine goes with the cosecant. So now we see that cotangent is one over tangent, which is one over this, which means it's x over y, okay? And then secant is now one over cosine, one over cosine of theta. But cosine is x over r, so when we flip that over, we get r over x. And then cosecant, finally, is one over sine, which is one over sine, I'll just write it down here, of theta. Sine is y over r, so we do one over that, we get r over y. Now everything I've written here, all of these, I'm gonna kind of box them. These are the definitions of sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Also the rainbow tells us kind of the identities that you can flip them over and, and have you know, the, the, the cotangent, secant, cosecant written in terms of everything else, right? But these definitions that we have here on the board, they're the exact same definitions that we used before. Exactly the same definitions. When you go back to the lesson on secant, cosecant, the first one we, that we did, all we did is we drew a triangle like this, and we said these are the definitions. These definitions for all of these functions are exactly the same ones that we already learned. The only slight difference now is that because we're letting the angle go anywhere, instead of just staying in quadrant one, the x and y values of a point on the terminal line here, they can be positive or negative. In quadrant one, they're always positive for both x and y, but as you go around, the x and y values can change positive, negative, and that means that all of these trig functions can be positive or negative depending on what quadrant you are in. That's why we're kind of going back through a second sweep Learning this again now, letting the angle get larger. The point P is at one, two, three, negative one, two, three, four. So the point P is somewhere right around here. I mean, I don't know exactly where, but this is the point P. And I can basically draw a line from the origin, yeah, I kind of messed that up, sorry. The origin, like this. So this point P is at three comma negative four. Now what I'm saying is that this point P forms a, um, it forms a terminal line. In other words, then I can measure an angle that goes all the way around to this terminal line. That angle is going to have some value called theta. Now we know that three comma four is the point here, right? But when you think about it, we also need to know R. We need to know the distance from here to here, right? How do we find the distance? Because this forms kind of a triangle. You can think of it being like this, like this is the triangle here. It goes down to like negative four. This is negative four, right? And this goes up to here being uh, positive three, like this. So if I wanna figure out what this is, I can say that r squared is gonna be equal to three squared plus negative four squared. It's the distance formula, or you can think of it as the Pythagorean theorem. Here's the hypotenuse of a triangle. This is one leg of a triangle. This is another leg of the triangle. This leg of the triangle is four. I'm putting a negative four in there. It doesn't really matter if you put negative or positive in. It's squared anyway. You can think of it as a distance formula. Um, but anyway, it's four units, and this is three units. So these are the sides of a triangle. I wanna find the length here. So I square both sides. I'm gonna get nine plus 16. I'm gonna add these, I'm gonna get 25, and I take the square root of both sides, which would be five. So the distance here is five units, r is five units, and I think it's probably a good idea to just kind of like put that right here, just inside, we'll put five units. It's actually, I'm not gonna do it in red because it looks like that's the angle. I'm not trying to say the angle uh, is five degrees or anything, I'm just saying the distance here is five distance units from the origin out to point P. Okay, so it's a three, four, five triangle, three, four, Five, which is a right triangle. So how do we find the sine of this angle theta, whatever this angle is? How do we find the sine of it? Well, we go back to all of our definitions. The sine of any angle is the y coordinate of point P divided by r, the distance to the origin, the hypotenuse. You can think of it as opposite over hypotenuse if you want, but when the angle gets way around, the other side of the circle, it doesn't help to think of triangles as much because it doesn't look like a triangle. But anyway, you can just put it in as y over r. What is the y value of this point? It's negative four. 
What is the R value, the distance to the origin? Five. So the sine of theta is negative four-fifths. This is a number. This is the sine of theta. And notice the sine is negative. The sine is negative. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.